Good morning, brethren. Good morning. Today, I'm not sure what they I'll refer to it as, but yesterday was fantastic Friday. Uh, I don't know what is the particular expression for today. But within a few days, brethren, we will see one of the greatest eruptions of human carnality that the world sees anywhere. There are few places where it's comparable. And Trinidadians like to boast that it is the greatest show on earth. But it precedes a religious festival that is called Ash Wednesday. And from there on, then we have 40 days of Lent, where people who are of this particular faith uh, abstain from what they call consider to be fleshly desires. Let me read something to you here from, uh, I saw this on catholiconline.com. It says, Ash Wednesday, mainly observed by Catholics, comes from the Jewish, the ancient Jewish tradition of penance and fasting. And I suppose they refer to the, the Jewish practice of having sackcloth and ashes. It says, ashes symbolize the dust from which God made us. Again, a bit of a little corruption here. God didn't make us from dust. He made us from chemicals in the ground that he called dust, but it's not dust like you see out of your homes. It says, uh, the priest says at that time to the devotees, remember that you are dust, and to dust shall you return. Or alternatively, he may say, repent and believe in the gospel. But why do these persons receive ashes? Well, the ashes are a symbol of penance. That was made sacramental by the blessings of the church. And the church here is the Catholic Church. And they help devotees develop a spirit of humility and sacrifice. The ashes were made from the blessed palms that they used in the Palm Sunday celebration the previous year, and they cremate them, and as they said, the, the ashes are quote-unquote christened with holy water, and if you know christened, there was Christ in christened, so it has uh, this kind of a uh, I suppose religious, spiritual connotation to being christened with holy water and are scented by exposure to incense. Now Pope Gregory in the 6th century he moved the observance to a Wednesday that we now, cons that we now refer to as Ash Wednesday in order to secure the exact number of 40 days, and I suppose this is a parallel also with Christ fasting and Moses fasting for 40 days, and nights I might tell. For the 40 days of Lent, they didn't count Sundays because Sundays were regarded as feast days. And this is how uh, that practice came in. But prior to that, these last few days, what we have is what is called reveling. And associated with carnival brethren is, re is reveling. The mass players you will see and hear very often, the revelers. Now there's an interesting derivation for the word revelers. The dictionary meaning says to enjoy oneself in a lively and noisy way, especially, especially with drinking <clears throat> and dancing. And what we have seen in our environment is a decline of what was once considered pageantry to designers pushing the boundaries of the society and I dare say of women themselves to the point of immodesty 
as far as you can push it to being considered immodest, that is where the designers are taking. So every year they shave millimeters of the, the costumes that women wear. Uh, and if you notice, they expose more and more of the female form. So that the carnival is now uh, turning out to be, as, as, as they say, I can be for men. So you see women's bodies all over the place. Some not that you don't want to see, but yeah. <laughs> that's what it, <clears throat> excuse me, that's what it is, is, is now descending to. And <clears throat> revelry, the origin of the word revelry is interesting. It's a, it is a late Middle English term, and it comes from an old French word, revelé, which means to rise up in rebellion. Interesting. To rise up in rebellion, and it has its root in the Latin, <clears throat> to rebel. So when you are reveling, <clears throat> excuse me, you're essentially engaging in some form of rebellion. But rebellion against who? And what? Let's take a look and see what the Bible says. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. And let's go read from verse 19. It says, <clears throat> Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, a note, drunkenness, and revelings, and the such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Note the other acts that are grouped along with drunkenness and revelings. And we know in this country, and there are statistical data to support it, that approximately nine months after carnival, there is a spike in the birth rate. And we've come to call such people carnival babies. Very often, they are not babies born to husbands and wives. Lots of times they're single women, unmarried. And what we have, brethren, is the action, a spiritual action now, on Ash Wednesday, to take these ashes and put a cross in your head. And that absolves you from whatever you may have participated in during that period of revelry. But brethren, God calls us to come out of the world. And even though we may not necessarily go and participate on the street, we could have the, 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 the desire. We could have the interest, perhaps. And as, as, as we used to say about persons who might appear to be pious, while they may not come down in the streets, they are prepared to do a little social chip. So that the Bible warns us against becoming emotionally attached to things like these. Let us look at 1 Peter chapter 4. And let's read verses 1 to 4. It says, for, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind that he has. For he has suffered for us in the flesh, 
For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life, or the past times in our life, it may have sufficed us, or pleased us, to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine. What did it say happens at, when, you, when revelings take place? Have you drinking? Revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein those with whom you had taken part in the past think that it is strange that you don't continue to run riot with them in the same excess, and they will speak evil of you. Brethren, part of the whole celebration of carnival is indulgence of the flesh to the ultimate and the only restraints I think that we are seeing is just how much the society is prepared to tolerate and how brazen the women themselves are. The men will go along with anything but it is to the women that they are pushing the envelope to get as close to nudity total nudity as possible where you will only find the, 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 the trappings that maybe certain striptease dancers may have until they finally dispense with everything and it has now been reduced to titillation now part of the whole carnival thing is devilry devilry has and you can see some of the old time characters the dragons and the demons and the bats and we have for example we say jab jab but jab jab is actually diab 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 is the french for devil so jab jab is an anglicization of the french diab diab devil and you see many many characters like this at carnival time so as it says here, brethren, we, we, we need to be aware of the extent to which we allow this to rub off on us and to the extent to which we may participate. Uh, pageantry is disappearing and it is being reduced to a, 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 a continuous display now of female flesh. Now to what extent do we expose ourselves to this? That is one of the things that we need to consider. Because, brethren, it says to come out of the world that you be not partakers of the sins. So to the extent that conceptually and maybe even emotion, because I, I knew a few people who were very much excited by carnival, even though they were in the church. Now, they may not necessarily have gone out there and jumped up in a band, etc. But they were very much acute to what was happening. They could tell you from day one who did this and who did that and who sung this and who sung that. And they could give you a newspaper report from, you know, Fantastic Friday, who was this and who in which fact and that type of thing. Now the only way you can know this, brethren, is if you have the interest. It is one thing to watch, you know, okay, so you may look at, at the king of the bands and the costume is nice. Or you may listen to the, you may watch the Calypso, the Extempo, for example. That is one thing. But when you can know all who is in whatever fit, that suggests more than an interest. And the Bible is asking us, but telling us, brethren, don't get that much involved in it. It is so pervasive that we can't escape it. It's everywhere you go. And depending on where you live, uh, it's impossible to escape. I mean, I lived in the north and around Port of Spain, it was impossible to escape carnival. Everywhere I went, it was there. And then at one time, it was part of my job, you know, I had to go and, 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 and get photographs and reports, etc., because we would publish a, a, a government magazine that we would send to the various embassies, let them see a little bit. 
so that I would have to make decisions as to what photographs we include, etc. And we send this to our missions abroad where people might be nostalgic and also to, 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 to have some impact upon foreigners who may see uh, what is taking place so that they too could be attracted and come and help the tourism sort of thing. But for Christians, brethren, who are aspiring to be, as it says, the children of God, we need to be aware of how much we allow ourselves to become emotionally drawn in. It's one thing to know, but to be drawn in emotionally, that's where we need to, 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 to be careful. And so, brethren, remember, the reveling that we see in carnival is rebellion. And it is rebellion against God, because as it says here, those who do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And if nevertheless, we still do it, knowing that it will not get us into the kingdom of God, then that is the spirit of rebellion that we can say, I don't care what God says. And I've heard people say this, I don't care. I like my carnival, and I will take part. So brethren, let us be aware of this time, notwithstanding the, uh, the, the, the sanctions that some that people get. So you're going to get ashes today, uh, supposedly uh, absolving you from whatever sins, but you come back and free to do it next year again. So you don't separate yourself from it. You just get a temporary, uh, what's the sacrament it was called? Uh, absolution. You get absolution today for the absolution for the 40 days. And the next year, you come up and do it all over again. That, brethren, is mocking God because we're taking his forgiveness to be a, tri a trivial matter. So, brethren, let us be careful to the extent to which we allow ourselves to be drawn in and to guard our minds and especially our spirits because we see the devil in carnival and this spirit of rebellion. We don't ever want to be tainted with that. So brother, let's be God.